So if you haven't heard the word on the street, uh, poison type Pokemon, they got buffed. So they're actually pretty good now compared to what they used to be. And the best partners for poison type Pokemon happen to be dark type Pokemon because poison type Pokemon, they kind of have issues against ghost types. Well, with this particular line I have going on here, using Shadow Skunk Tank as a safe swap, a dark poison Pokemon, it kind of nips that whole ghost issue in the bud right there with a really aggressive safe swap. And as far as the Golbat goes, Golbat does have the Shadow Ball, which can help in a pinch. Also, newly buffed with the Poison Fang, uh, actually being a, I'd say a top meta threat. You know, Golbat used to be on the cusp of the meta. Now I'm going to say that it's definitely established a meta threat in the game. If you haven't heard about these poison buffs, I do have a top 10 video link in the description so you can get up to date on the big winners from the Season 8 GBL update there. Um, but yeah, Skunk Tank and Golbat, definitely two big winners there. So I decided to use a team with them with Metacham in the lead. So what brought me to this team? Well, in Remix Cup, as you guys may remember, I did use a Wish Cash double poison line to really good effect. And with the poison type buffs, a lot of people are saying, Ryan Swag, you know, the Beedrill Golbat in the back, that could really work out now because of the buffs. So I gave it a couple tries, and I was noticing that uh, I was having a big Skarmory issue, or just like a flying type issue in general. Uh, so I decided to swap over to the Shadow Skunk Tank there to kind of shore up those problems. Also, Beedrill doesn't tango with Sableye super well. Skunk Tank, on the other hand, tangos with Sableye really well. The Shadow Skunk Tank, that is. So, another reason for the swap there. Then when it comes to Metacham, the whole motivation with replacing Wishcash with Metacham here was just to handle Skarmory even better. Skarmory has been kind of a eyesore for a lot of these poison teams in Season 8 GBL, so I just wanted some more aggressive like counter damage to help kind of wear it down along with these Pokemon wearing it down. Uh, so trying to, trying to round that out. I'd say if there's any Pokemon on this team that may be on its way out getting replaced with something else, it'll probably be Metacham. Uh, I am looking at those dark type Pokemon like Obstagoon and Scrafty. Those sound like really tantalizing options. And then uh, Wishcash itself and Swampert also sound really good for the same slot there. I'd have to say whenever I like have a losing streak of some sort and I start to get a little bit sick of the Metacham and its faults, uh, then I end up getting like a big old win streak where, you know, I may have lost if I use something other than Metacham or Metacham just made it that much more easy. So I'm a little bit on the fence what I want to do about Metacham there. But if you're not digging the Metacham, definitely uh, you can swap, swap that out with another counter user or a mud boy and probably have good results. The back line, however, the back line is, uh, is these two guys. For sure. If you're curious about the IV spreads here, the Metacham is the rank 326. Um, basically, kind of doctored up from my OG Great League Metacham before we had the whole level 50 buff. Uh, I am looking at maybe, you know, topping it off a little bit more, bringing it closer to that 1500. Or should I save my XL candy for the new rank 5 that I have waiting in the wings? It's kind of a bit of a debate because it's like, am I really going to get the 296 XL candy compared to like the 50 XL candy that I need to doctor this one up? So a little bit of a debate in my mind right now. When it comes to the skunk tank, it is the <laughs> 734. It's really not that great. I really did want to use a shadow skunk tank for this team though. I feel like it is a pivotal member uh, for this particular strategy. I do have better normal skunk tanks, but you know, they, they don't handle as many of the matchups as well. Not as aggressive with that big shadow boosted charge move damage. So that is very important. And all the other skunk tank candidates I had, shadow ones of course, were just even worse. So if I do get a better like shadow stunky in the future, I am going to be building twice here. Uh, but this one has been handling things pretty well. Just a uh, Missing a lot of defense breakpoints probably against like counter and dragon breath users making my life a little bit harder there. And then finally with the Golbat, this is the same Golbat from my Remix Cup team. So if you're not familiar, it is the rank uh, 948 Purified Golbat. Uh, I built it for a cup a million years ago and uh, haven't gotten that much better of a Golbat candidate, so it's been working out. I used to praise it because it'd get a couple like wing attack breakpoints and some nice matchups. It wasn't like game flipping, but it was kind of nice. But now we got Poison Fang, so that doesn't matter as much. Maybe I am getting some nice like post debuff breakpoints, but PV Poke doesn't let us uh, navigate those very easily. So if I am getting them, then I'm kind of unaware of it. 
Uh, but yeah, for these two Pokemon, it would definitely be really nice if they were tankier. So if you have tankier iterations of a non-Shadow Golbat or a Shadow Skunk Tank here, then you probably will be doing this line a lot better than I am. At any rate, I'm going to be showing you guys seven matches here with this team, and they are a little bit cut up because uh, I noticed when I was reviewing the footage, there was tons of Bastiodon lines that I was just mulching down, and uh, I was like, shoot, people aren't going to want to watch like me fight Bastiodon lines like five times over. Like, of course your line's doing good, Ryan Swag. You're just hitting Bastiodon all the time and, and wrecking it with your Metacham. Uh, so yeah, I decided to chop it up a little bit for you guys, get a little bit more variety in there instead of just nothing but Bastiod Online. So I hope you enjoy the battles here. And of course, as Skunk Tank is telling you here on the side, if you haven't subscribed to Swag Tips already, make sure to drop that subscribe. It really helps out. So we're going into my first opponent here. It's uh, Mud Kipst AZ, so Arizona Mud Kip over here. And what do we have but a Bastiodon line? Yeah, I wasn't kidding, man. It's like all Bastiodon. Uh, so they safe swap into the Venusaur, which definitely is not safe because I have the Golbat. Uh, usually you don't want to bring in Golbat so early. You know, you want to save it for the late game for any grass types they may be holding in the back. Um, you know, a more consistent end game Pokemon. But it is a really, really hard swap, hard counter onto the Venusaur there. So I don't mind burning it early just to make sure that matchup is 100% clean. And it is a little bit difficult for the Skunk Tank to match, you know, Venusaur because it is such an aggressive charge move Pokemon that charge move damage can't take it out, especially since my Skunk Tank has horrific bulk. It's got the worst IVs ever. So of course I let the uh, Bastiodon do its work, take me out there uh, so I can lock it up with the Metacham. And then we have Azumarill in the back there. Uh, so my Skunk Tank just waiting for it. Aggressive, shadow boosted. Poison jab damage. If there's any matchup, I'm probably getting a break point and it's probably gonna be this one um, By the way, if you guys are curious uh, Like the rank 1 shadow skunk tank. I think there is some merit to going with a slight attack weight uh, In the Sableye matchup the XL Sableye if you have like a 2 Attack IV and then 15 15 or something like that uh, Then you get a break point and that can make that matchup that much more consistent but of course, uh, mine mine is like the rank 700 something, so that's not anything we have to worry about at all. I'm definitely hitting that breakpoint at least. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately um, for you guys, I don't have all of the Skunk Tank breakpoints memorized. I, I looked them up like uh, a week or so ago, and I was like, okay, I'm hitting enough of what I need to have this not be complete ass. So <laughs> so I went forward with it. But if you are ogling several Shadow Skunk Tank options. Uh, definitely check out the matchups against Pokemon that use like Dragon Breath and Counter because you can flip those matchups or at least have more consistent matchups against them uh, if you are avoiding their breakpoints and hitting your own breakpoints. So definitely good to keep in mind there. So now we are rolling into battle number two with the Jelco 3. What is Jelco 3 whipping out? Is that a Shadow Ivysaur? What could possibly team up with a Shadow Ivysaur? I don't know. So I say swap the Skunk Tank here because, yeah, they're obviously going to swap to a Bastiodon or at least like a Galar Stunfisk. But I was not kidding about all of the Bastiodons I keep running into with this team. Like, if you're winning in the Great League and you're using a line that uses like Bastiodon, then I guess the algorithm's going to pick me to be your opponent, man, because I'm coming in hot. Uh, but yeah, you can see here that. While I wasn't able to get any shields from the Bastiodon, I do wear it down quite a bit. And this isn't such a big deal for counter users, I guess. Um, but in general, you know, the less charge moves this thing can reach, you know, the less of a chance it has to whittle down the Pokemon that's coming in to farm it, the better. And I'm over an Ice Punch, a whole Ice Punch. I've reached the Psychic just off of that farm down there. So I don't really need too much more farm than that to do well. Now, this matchup is in the bag. I could have just swapped to Golbat right away, but I decided to just throw the Ice Punch, see what happens. Getting the shield or not at this point doesn't matter because it's a done deal. My opponent recognizes this, and they uh, they scoop on out of there. So yeah, you're trying to run the Grass Hole. You're trying to run the illegal team, as I like to put it, uh, which is uh, the Sableye safe swap with the Metacham in the back. Well, you're going to be hurting against the Swagman here. Now we're going in against my third Opponent of the night, we got Dai with a, a whole bunch of numbers. <laughs> Ooh, look at that outfit. This guy's a pro player. And then we have the Metacham mirror matchup. And it's fights like these where it's like, 
I'm glad that I'm using Metacham in the lead, but then again, both of my uh, safe swap options, both of my swap options here, are good against Metacham, so it's not that big of a deal. So, you know, uh, here I shield up their Psychic, so I have the damage advantage, they have the shield advantage, and I'm going in for an Ice Punch, making them think that it might be a Psychic. Am I going to get that shield? No, but I did get the KO, and they bring in Sableye. So Sableye v Skunk Tank uh, is a pretty like dire fight for the Sableye because you really do need to land the return. This one is uh, unpurified, so I wasn't too concerned about Power Gem hitting me because I know I can tank that one. So poor unpurified, uh, you know, raw dog Sableyes over here without the return. Pretty sad. Um, but yeah, when it comes to Skunk Tank v Sableye, Sableye does have a chance to win if it's purified, if it's able to reach that power gem, I mean, uh, return, but this one didn't have it, but they did have shield advantage, so I was able to mulch down all their shields. So even shield situation, that's your out, uh, but you know, the moment I shield a return from you, it's, it's GG there. So then we have Sableye v Golbat here in the end game, and I decide to let like, uh, I played it like a bit less cautiously, right? Because I was thinking that there was Bastiodon in the back. I mean, it's basically the illegal team here, right? But unfortunately for me, it is Azumarill in the back. So definitely not, not, not a great situation for me here. Like if I was using like an Obstagoon or something, maybe I'd have the chance to uh, throw the trash can at it. Uh, who knows how things would play out, because I'd swap out if I had the Obstagoon in the lead. Uh, but I guess wrong as far as what was in the back line, and now I'm paying the price. You know, <laughs> if I was a little bit more prepared for this, then Golbat possibly could have pulled through, but unfortunately, I guessed wrong. You don't win them all, guys. Then we go into my fourth opponent here, Curated. Uh, this is actually one of my patrons, so I was like a little bit nervous to run into him. And what do we got but another Bastiodon team, right? Seriously, I tried to I tried to shake up the variety here for you, but uh, there's at least like almost three times as many Bastiodon teams that I fought with this team. Uh, so they safe swap to the Sableye because you know obviously match and be Bastiodon. What are you gonna do there? And then they uh, decide to take the Crunch Raw there, throwing the return. Uh, hoping they could possibly beat me in like a zero shield situation, but he's got Bastiodon. Like, I really don't care. <laughs> like, it's like, fine, man. Uh, take shield advantage. I got Metacham be Bastiodon. So yeah, this is a, a pretty hard countered matchup. And uh, as you'll find in the back here, this is actually the illegal team. So like Grasshole teams, the uh, Sableye Metacham, like illegal super meta team there, um, does not have anything to do against this particular squad. Uh, no matter how you shake it up, because at the end of the day that Bastiodon is going to get lined up to the Metacham, and Golbat has a relative advantage over both other things, both non-Bastiodon Pokemon, uh, same with Skunk Tank, so yeah, a legal team definitely has it rough here. And then we got Golbat v Metacham in the endgame. Usually Metacham could possibly have a glimmer of hope here, but with the Poison Fang buff, uh, the matchup is way more consistent for uh, Golbat here than what it has ever been before. So it's just pretty straight on. Uh, very simple matchup for Golbat to win now. Where before you had to be a little bit cautious about the situation. You know, definitely got to try to land that Shadow Ball. Here you can just go straight Poison Fang and it's not an issue. And the good thing with uh, normal Golbat versus the Shadow Golbat is that uh, you can't actually tank a Psychic in a lot of situations. So... That's why I like to roll with the non-Shadow Golbat in, uh, in this particular lineup. Then we're going on to match number 5 here, the Furpo Gur 2. Looking fly. And we've got the Shiny Obstagoon. Like when I saw that thing pop up, I was like, what the heck is that? Like, oh, Shiny Obstagoon? Oh, what? Yeah, <laughs> you know? It's so goofy looking, it's so loud. Uh, so they swap to the Nidoqueen. And I decided to stay in against this because this thing does not want to eat an Ice Punch ever. And I know that uh, the initial Poison Fang won't hurt a whole lot and then my Poison types resist it. Golbat has Wing Attack on it uh, for neutral damage, which is nice. Uh, I shielded the first Poison Fang because I thought that they were kind of privy to what I had going on and they were going to go for the Earth Power right away. 
Uh, but I was mistaken and uh, kind of hung out in that fight a little bit longer than I should have. Uh, I might be a little bit overconfident with how the Obstagoon matchup may go later on because I do resist the counter damage and they are double super effective with the counter damage. So I, I might have been a little bit too brazen in that particular situation. At any rate, they bring Obstagoon back in. Uh, Golbat has a total advantage over Obstagoon there, just throwing the neutral poison things, debuffing it, weakening it down, hitting it with the neutral wing attacks, while double resisting counter, which is pretty big. Problem is that the Night Slashes definitely do hurt. Like once again, big advantage to not using the shadow here because <laughs> that probably would have taken me out. And then they uh, come in with the Jellicent. Now I know I'm not possibly going to reach that shadow ball so i decided to just debuff it right away give it that little parting kiss there uh, maybe spook it out of the pokemon i'm gonna be bringing in next so skunk tank comes in skunk tank is up his shield so my opponent basically has nothing to do here crunch will ohko it even if it didn't have the debuff it would just be a straight ohko and then i decided to tank that because i don't want to get hit with the bubble beam uh, bait there and then I swap catch the poison thing I have tons of experience using Nidoqueen and I definitely have been toying with Nidoqueen lines uh, I'm a little bit hesitant on making a video now because everybody and their grandma has made a Nidoqueen video but if you do want to see the Swagman's Nidoqueen line uh, comment below and let me know what your interest is in seeing how the Swagman spins the Nidoqueen but yeah crunch just obliterates anything that's weak to it even things that are neutral to it it obliterates which is what makes Shadow Skunk Tank such a powerful safe swap option because the charge moves, nothing really wants to get hit with them and you can outpace a lot of stuff that, that aren't expecting to be outpaced with that matchup too, so it's pretty nice. Uh, so in our next opponent, they have the uh, G-Fisk with the safe swap into the Pelipper and Pelipper is pretty annoying I guess because it's like technically yes I can overcome it I can get shields from it but as you can see here it reaches the weather ball faster than skunk tank can reach the crunch here so it's it's kind of annoying because the crunch will take it out but then it can possibly fast move me down if I did have a bulkier skunk tank if I didn't have a rank ass skunk tank here um, I would probably be either winning this matchup or getting a shield from them uh, like a second shield from them or something or, or not as easily farmed but unfortunately my skunk tank is the rank but skunk tank so i'm a little bit i'm a little bit stuck there <laughs> with my skunk tank um, probably should have swapped to golbat golbat would have had a lot more consistent matchup i was just kind of like nervous about the uh the g fisk there and i was like well i'd rather have a uh, skunk tank lined up with the g fisk so a little bit of a mistake uh, so I went in to try to swap catch the rock slide, clearly didn't work out, so this thing's going to be very, very close to an earthquake when it comes back in. Uh, I do get the ice punch bait on the Venusaur, so I am sitting pretty for this matchup. I can't remember if I shield here or not, yeah, I definitely do shield here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I shield up the, the frenzy plant, I reach the psychic, psychic one shots from this point, so... Kind of glad that in this particular matchup, like this is one of the redemption matchups for Metacham, who I'm constantly thinking about cutting from the squad. So it redeems itself. It's Psychic, say, uh, a Venusaur there. And then I reach the Ice Punch with that big, that big thickness, and I Ice Punch it down. Boom. So yeah, one thing that's a little bit unfortunate for you guys is, uh, I didn't get any good footage of Skunk Tank v Stun Fisk. Uh, the... Flamethrower doesn't OHKO it, but if you were to have the matchup drag on enough where it was like crunch bait into flamethrower, or if you do land the flamethrower, uh, then you can flip that matchup uh, if you shield uh, the earthquake. So definitely deadly Pokemon here in the stung, in the skunk skunk tank skunk tank deadly. So against the Altaria here, a lot of times in the Altaria matchup, I'll stay in to throw the Ice Punch because it does such big damage to the Altaria, and then I'll uh, save swap into either Skunk Tank or Golbat to like kind of finish it off and to tank the Sky Attack there, um, just to burn its energy and uh, give me a little bit more of an advantage later on. And then with the save swap in the Skunk Tank, usually I can reach a charge move before the next thing can take me out. So as you can see here, I did reach the Crunch. Uh, I guess it didn't matter too much because this thing's still living, didn't get a shield, but Golbat v Toxicroak is really nice because then I get a big energy lead. So when Altaria comes back in, I can throw a Poison Fang right away, make its life miserable. Like, why, why are you coming back here, bro? It's not going to go good for you. 
Then I reach the second poison fang, and either here I take it out, or, or they shield it up yet. Um, they do continuously shield it up. We have two shield endgame, where I have a Golbat with a poison fang, and yeah, they, they pulled out here. <laughs> I don't know what their final Pokemon was, because they, they just gave up. <laughs> So there you have it guys, uh, double poison backline, back at it again, but instead of using the Beedrill, we are using the Shadow Skunk tank, because in the open meta, I think there are still just too many things out there that just harass the Beedrill endlessly, and Shadow Skunk tank is doing the same exact job that I want Beedrill to do, but just better against a wider variety of opponents. And as for everybody watching this, Definitely give these two Pokemon a shot here. As you know, these are like the rank ass for me. Definitely not good rank Pokemon. And if you do have better ranked versions of the Shadow Skunk Tank and the Golbat, especially the Shadow Skunk Tank, then you'll be doing a lot more consistently than I've been doing with this team. And I've just been going up with this team, so... <laughs> definitely even better at any rate if you got any questions on this content comment below let me know what's up i'll be happy to help you out and if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it well make sure to subscribe to swag tips swag tips i'd also like to give a special shout out to these patron supporters if you want to support the swag man on patreon link in the description